I've screwed up. I've made tons of mistakes in commission, but I've learned some tough lessons so that you don't have to. What's up y'all and welcome back to The Art Mentor. My name is Sean. I'm a veteran art teacher and freelance artist. And today I'm gonna be open, honest, and raw with you today. So let me share my wisdom and experience with you so that you know how to avoid these commissions mistakes. And it's gonna start right now. So the biggest mistake that I made y'all when I was first starting out was just stalling on starting out. And what I mean by that is that I used to be so overcome by my fears and my doubts and I didn't think I could do it. I had a lot of anxiety over the fact that I didn't think anybody would wanna pay me. Like why would somebody wanna pay me for art when there are so many great artists out there that are already well established and already getting paid for their artwork. And that led to my imposter syndrome, which a lot of artists suffer from. You cannot think your way into being a commissioned artist. You cannot think your way into getting more clients. You cannot think your way into growing your art business. You have to just take action. You have to try, you have to put forth the effort. It is infinitely better for you to just exert some type of effort towards the goal that you want to achieve than to just sit back and just, hmm, let me think about this. And you need to just do it and then you can course correct after it. You will never, ever, ever start anything in your life, but particularly our commissions, fully equipped and knowing every single step of the process, everything that you need to do. It's just not gonna happen, my friends. And it's because of that that people also tend to do stuff like this. I used to, in the beginning, waste a ton of time on things that just don't matter. Yo, if you are wasting time on creating these exquisite commission sheets and websites and terms and conditions and art contracts that look like they were tailored by a uh, law firm, then you are absolutely wasting your time because my friends, I just need to tell you this in case you're unaware, people aren't gonna buy you for that crap. They are only going to buy you in your services for your art. Anything that you are doing to distract yourself from making our work is just that. It's a distraction. There's no benefit to you doing anything that is not going to produce better quality artwork. None of that matters at all. You have to hook the client on your artwork and anything that you are going to do that is going to detract from your time making artwork, you really just need to stop and ask yourself this question, is this really what my focus should be right now? Because if your focus is not on making artwork, then you really need to consider how beneficial it is to you. And then when I did start to take clients, sometimes I made this oopsie. When I first started, I made the cardinal sin on commissions of not getting paid up front. You are no doubt going to get the turd bag that asks you to delay payment until they see something. Never ever do this, my friends. Just please don't do this. It is a scam and it's a big trap. And what these people are doing, I mean, let's not even call them people because that's not fair. They're predators, okay? And they prey upon eager artists that want to make money, but they're just trying to get something out of it. And this can take many forms. They can say, that, oh, well, I need to see a sketch or I need to see half of it done. Or the most popular scam I see nowadays too is people saying that they need a test artwork. Y'all, this is a scam. I even had one client one time ask me to read a section of their book before I made an illustration for it. And I just said, no, I'm not gonna do anything until there's payment for it. Because here's the simple fact, y'all. You should not be more invested than the client is. If you are more invested than the client is, there's a disconnect happening. So it's just not worthwhile for you. Now here's another big issue with pricing I see all the time. So the topic of discounts comes up a lot in pricing, particularly when you have a client approach you with multiple artworks and you're naturally gonna put yourself in the position like you're some wholesale retailer and you wanna give them a bulk discount. Okay, so let me just advise you on this right here. This is the number one biggest issue that I used to commit all the time. Somebody would approach me and say, hey, I want three artworks. And I would say, oh, wow, that's awesome. Then I would give them a discounted price. And then after one artwork or maybe two artworks at best out of those five, then they would dump out. All of a sudden, the money well, oh no, has shrunk. It is completely dried up. My advice to you would be to do this one of two ways. Number one is that if you are going to give them a bulk discounted price, is that you ask them for full upfront payment and you give them a contract that they can sign and they'll hold you both accountable for it. Or number two, and this is my most common method that I do this, is if somebody says, hey, I want 10 artworks, I'm gonna tell them, okay, cool. Well, I want my full normal pricing, 
for the first three, and then after that, I will start to give a bulk discount to price. That way, you don't feel slighted as the artist. The client is going to feel invested in that, and they're going to feel compelled. This is a better way than what I have experienced heavily in the past, where I used to give out these awesome bulk discounts, and then the whole time I'm working on the commission, how do you think I feel? I feel miserable because I'm getting paid less, whereas I'm also at the same time starting to get new clients who are going to pay me more. So it's just a sucky situation to be in. And then while working with clients, I've also sometimes been guilty of doing this. Now listen, y'all, one of the worst mistakes that you can make in art commissions is not subscribing to this channel. I would love to have your support, so please make sure that you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and hey, if you find this content helpful, please share it with somebody that you know so that this can grow and we can help more people and more artists make more money. Not listening to the client, what they are wanting and envisioning is a huge critical error. This is something that you really need to build a lot of professionalism into. And it's really difficult for us as artists because you're gonna be given a task and you're gonna be given money and therefore you are obligated to that client to produce their vision. It's not your vision, it's their vision. And it's tough because oftentimes, and I, I feel this myself and I, I typically feel this a lot with clients, is that my vision is better than their vision. And I'm just being honest about that, like I said I would, right? And I have to put my ego aside. You have to do the project the way that the client wants it done and that they are paying for. If they are dissatisfied with it, that is not their problem. That's your problem. That was my problem. And sometimes, yeah, I still do this every once in a while. Just apologize and tell them that it's gonna be okay. Hey, my bad, take ownership of it because it makes you look more professional. If you are defensive, if you're argumentative about it, if you're really battling for it, it's really gonna degrade the entire experience for both you and your client, and that's not what you want. If you've ever done this before, if you ever had any issues with checking your ego, let me know about it down below. Now this also brings up this topic. One of the mistakes that I used to make sometimes is that I would not clearly communicate certain times when I needed more time. There would be certain times when I would feel nervous about just reaching out to the client and say, hey, um, I know that I usually give you updates on Fridays. Is it okay if I give you an update on Sunday? Is it okay if I give you an update on Monday? And I would instead like work myself wicked hard unnecessarily. I would stay up late, I would get up early, and I would throw extra work into there and I would make myself exhausted just to meet my deadline. If you just feel comfortable communicating with the client, hey, I just need a day or two, is that cool? And let me tell you y'all, every single time I've done this, I've never gotten a client that got angry at me and neither should you. So for the sake of your time, your other obligations, and especially your mental health, if you need a couple more days, then just reach out and communicate to the client and just explain to them. And they will probably have no problem with it. At the detriment of that, if you don't do this, then you run the risk of working yourself too hard and getting burnt out. One of the worst things I used to suffer from, and I still continue to at times, is this issue. I tend to procrastinate on starting my projects. And if you do too, let me know about it because me personally, every single time I get a new project, I have insane anxiety around just starting it at times. And you can come up with tons of excuses and say, oh, well, I'm just too tired today. I've been working too hard. Life is stressful right now. I would very much recommend that you battle your procrastination by simply doing a couple of things. Number one is doing some intense research, getting some detailed references for your project, and then just starting it. Once you start it and just work on it for like an hour, and you are going to feel so much better about that process and it's going to ease your anxiety significantly. And what I tend to find is that typically by like hour number two or three, I am supercharged and I'm really enthusiastic about that project and I have zero doubts anymore. What you really wanna focus on y'all is the value of the opportunity versus what I would feel sometimes, which was just, I would feel like I could potentially screw it up or do a bad job. So instead focus on how awesome the opportunity is because you never know when that might be your big breakthrough. Now, this also used to be exacerbated by this issue. Artists tend to have a big issue with shiny object syndrome, which is if you've never heard this or been familiar with it, basically this is when you get really excited about a new idea and you drop what you're currently doing and then you shift all of your enthusiasm and all of your focus to that. Sometimes I'm in the middle 
of a project that I'm feeling really great about. Then I get contacted by another client and I really love that project and I really love everything about it. Then my enthusiasm for project A starts to transfer into project B and it's tough for me to continue to work on project A. You want to exert the same level of enthusiasm because not only do you owe it to the client, not only are you obligated to produce that awesome artwork for that client, but more importantly, y'all, you're obligated to yourself here, okay? Because when you show your artwork the full respect that it needs and deserves, then you feel great on the inside and you feel accomplished. And you know that you have fulfilled your purpose in life by creating that artwork. And lastly, there's this concern that wraps up and summarizes all of these commission concerns. If you are only doing art commissions because you are focused on collecting an income or collecting money, this is a horribly misaligned focus. Here's my advice to you. It does not matter how much you're getting paid. And I know that I've advised y'all how much you should or should not get paid. Let's disregard all that. If you are getting paid $5, if you're getting paid $20, if you're getting paid $1,000, if you're getting paid $10,000 for a project, I want you to treat them all the same. And I want you to give them all the same respect that they deserve because you're not doing it for the money. You're doing it for yourself. You're doing it to challenge yourself and you're doing it to grow yourself and you're doing it to grow your business. And most importantly, y'all, you're doing it for your future. When you have that mindset of you are gonna create an awesome future for yourself by creating X artwork, then you are going to draw energy from that future and then eventually over time and with some patience, you are going to create that future for yourself and you don't know which artwork is going to be the breakthrough artwork or the artwork that's going to attract you uh, 10 more clients, 20 more clients, a lifetime of clients. You don't know that, so don't screw it up by being money focused and greedy and hungry only for that. You should always be focused and aligned to the purpose of creating awesome artwork. And hey, if you wanna learn more about art commissions, where to find them, how to get them, and best practices, make sure you watch the rest of these videos right here.